Alrighty, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Lauren. I'm the community manager here at Minds at Work, and I am joined for this first of our community conversations by the lovely Gillian Seeley, um, uh, who you can see on the screen. There, Gillian is a writer and campaign manager currently working freelance, um, and Gillian is going to talk to us a little bit about her experiences with ADD and the impact on her work styles and productivity, um, and. Please do bear in mind that while this is Gillian's experience, everybody does experience ADD and neurodiversity differently. So this is to sort of help explain and help uh, understand how things can be better for people. Uh, so hi, Gillian, welcome to Minds at Work in this community conversation. Hi, um, Lauren, thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries. Uh, could you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself? Who are you, Gillian Zeele? Yeah, <laughs> so I... <laughs> I am uh, first and foremost um, a, a freelance writer. Well, not first and foremost. I'm a person, but <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a freelance writer um, and a, a communications consultant. I also do some um, campaign directing, um, but all in a freelance capacity. And um, I also have ADHD, and um, I'm going to refer to it intermittently with uh, ADD. And I realize um, ADHD is actually the the correct term for the whole umbrella of disorders, but um, my particular brand is um, not in the sort of hyperactive vein, which has caused some of the issues. I'll, I'll explain along the way, too. Oh, awesome. Um, so, yeah, as you say, you have ADD. So <coughs> did learning this diagnosis, getting this diagnosis, did that shine a light on any of your work practices? It did. And it's been a really slow, slow, um, kind of painful process for me to figure it out. Um, I think I knew in childhood, you know, I've got three brothers and a father, all of whom have a really unique type of um, ADHD or ADD um, and a mother who does not. So um, my older brother, you know, was out there leading the path and um, had a very, very recognizable form of the hyperactive version of the disorder and was diagnosed pretty young. Um, and, you know, in the late eighties, early nineties, uh, the diagnosis was, um, probably a good thing that it was caught, but the way they went about uh, diagnosing and treating it was sort of, oh, you have a problem and you have to take this, this pill. And it didn't necessarily work for him. So while mine went undetected, part of me thinks it's probably um, been for the best that I've had to kind of figure it out the, the long and hard way. And um, a lot of that has had to do with the way I work and um, the sort of career I've chosen and um, ultimately led me to where I am as a freelancer. So, you know, you, as you say, this has been a long road for you and it's, it's quite a, well, certainly an adult diagnosis. Uh, so when you were working before you fully understand, understood your needs, how did that impact how you sh showed up at work? Yeah, I think there have been a lot of things um, I've done in a professional context that are abnormal, I guess, or that neurotypical people wouldn't feel the need to do. Um, you know, some of the classic things like fidgeting or um, needing to get up really frequently. Um, just it's like a physiological need. I have to get up from my chair. Sometimes, you know, ridiculous, like 10 times an hour to go just do something. And it's it's been really challenging. And in particular in offices where there was an open plan, <laughs> floor plan. And I can remember when that was um, announced as, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to move from cubicles to open floor plan. And everyone was celebrating. And inside, I was kind of dying a little bit, like, please don't do that. You're going to out me for being someone who can't sit still. And that was really hard. But it was also kind of a revelation for me, like, OK, I'm figuring out what I need as a professional. And the things I need are. Um, deadlines and I need um, I, I liken it to um, my mother used to work with uh, children with autism and some of them um, benefited from like really tight squeezing of their arms it felt really good it made them feel safe but for me it's like a brain squeeze that makes me feel safe so if someone gives me a deadline and they say this is what I need um, this is when I need it by those are things that are really really beneficial for me as opposed to just kind of being left to flounder in uh, an office and having to kind of figure out what needs working on. So um, to, to answer your question, uh, you know, the things that haven't worked have helped me figure out what does work and have um, 
ultimately put me on the path to becoming a freelancer, which has been really good for me. Mm. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about that sort of career change from in, in-house to a freelancer. You know, what, what was the impetus behind that? Was that part of your working out what you need and how to work? Um, uh, perfectly candidly, I, um, I was in London and it was not long after our paths first crossed, I think, um, <laughs> when I was working for a really big company. Um, and I, I went on maternity leave and came back from maternity leave. And like a week later, they uh, announced they were cutting my role along with a lot of other people's roles. <laughs> so um, I wasn't planning on freelancing, um, but there were a lot of people I had worked with over the seven years I was with that organization who knew that I had done really good. They thought really good writing work for them and who had moved on in their professional lives and started to contact me and said, you know, are you open and available to do this project for us? And it really just grew from there, the word of mouth thing. Um, mm. So that's that's the way um, that's the way I got kind of started freelancing, and it's been over four years now. So, mm. yeah. And what sort of difference has that? I guess that ability to control your environment. What has what difference has that made to you in terms of work? The working from home thing has been an absolute lifesaver for me. Um, I'm also an introvert. And um, I think that's another thing that people don't always think of when they think of ADHD or ADD Mm -hmm. is introversion. You imagine people to be really extroverted and kind of gregarious and interrupting and and talking and, you know, not able to stop talking. And that's just not me. So um, being able to work in my own space and my own safe space and interact with people when I need to get up as many times as I need to, but know that I'm going to get the work done when I need to get it done, whether that's at two in the morning or, you know, mm-hmm. six at night, um, I'm, it's, I'm gonna get it done on my terms. And I, I kind of feel like that's aligned to what's happening in the broader workforce for people of all sort of neuro, <laughs> neurotypical and neurodivergent people um, where employers are realizing that the, the structures that have, been espoused as normal for years and years and years maybe actually aren't all that helpful in the professional setting so um so yeah it's been good for me though um the pandemic was difficult but um it helped me really put my head down and build up a client roster and um find a a rhythm that's a little healthier than what I was in before Mm. and I think that's that's interesting we could maybe just go down that path a little bit uh, you talk about the the remote working, the home working being a godsend for you, and uh, and I, I know a lot of people have felt the same. And there's now this push to get back into the office in a lot of the corporate environments. Um, when we were talking before this, you talked a little bit about productivity and the impact yep. that um, corporate or sort of office environments have had uh, on your ADD. Could you talk a little bit more about that in terms of how you find productivity and expectations of productivity? in the workplace? Yeah, I think um, so to to look at a kind of a cross-sector example, in higher education in the U.S., there's a big push to get, to move away from the idea that it's the amount of time you spend in your seat that um, should be measured as the metric of success and look instead at competencies. And I think the same thing, you know, is happening in the, the workforce. And um, for for me, things like having to clock hours for a certain client, um, having to track or report those hours that I work on a given week. It's not just difficult, it's almost impossible. If you look at my computer at any given time, I have, I'm ashamed to say, you know, like a hundred tabs open in a browser and that's just how my brain works. It's how I process information. And I'm sometimes literally hopping back and forth. But when I get into that hyper-focus mode, I will be working on a Um, you know, a a particular piece for like six hours without even getting up or taking a break. Mm. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a shaming thing to have to track, track time for me, because I, I don't, in a sense, I almost lack the, the capacity to just open the software and hit click go when I start to write on a project, and then I'd have to click stop 10 minutes later when I open something else. And in my mind, this doesn't mean I'm a less capable worker it just means that my work doesn't follow the time patterns that other people's follow so yeah that's one thing yeah I think that's a really important lesson actually because I I know when the pandemic happened and even 
before that for remote workers, many bosses were putting not just time tracking software in, but click tracking and, you know, keyboard tracking as well, which just feels super invasive to me. Um, But that, that would obviously not work for you either. Yeah. No, and it's not because I'm, you know, spending hours on Facebook or, or texting friends or it's not um it's not that I lack the uh capability to perform the task or get the the deadline met. It's it's just the way my brain is wired where I have to kind of click. I have to move through different things in order to get that brain squeeze that I need to be able to do the work. So um, yeah, so the time tracking, click tracking sounds atrocious, by the way, if anyone's doing that, please reconsider. (laughs) Even if you're not um, ADHD, I can imagine that would be a really difficult thing to have to um, live with. But um, yeah, so the open plan, the click tracking, and then, you know, there have been, uh, and to be fair, I never said to a manager, look, I have ADHD. Um, I have been kind of quiet about about it um, until until this moment, actually, and um, I. But I have had managers who have been really uh, amazing in that they only care about the work. You know, they say we recognize you're a whole person, you're a professional. We hired you to do a job. This is in an office setting, not in the freelance setting. Um, and they've said, you know, just get it to me on time and how you do it, where you do it, what time you do it. I don't care. Um, and then we'd have candid conversations about quality. And to me, that feels like a much more mature approach to work. Mm. And, um, and it allows room for people of all different, you know, uh, mindsets or with any kind of um, neurodivergence to, to sort of thrive professionally without mm. feeling this pressure. I, I like that you called it a more mature approach because it does feel like sometimes those very micromanagey needing to know exactly what's going on every time and this is us just now you know complaining about work we've had in the past yeah. But, but yeah it does it does feel like that is counterproductive to good quality work done well um so yeah it's really it's really interesting to hear you call it a mature approach because I agree um I'm just yeah. wondering sorry go ahead oh no I was just gonna say I I keep coming back to this idea of um you know, the mature approach to work for me is distilling on the manager's part or on the the employee's part, what is the transaction that's happening here? You know, I want, Mm -hmm. I want to be honest with employers or my clients, and I want them to be honest with me and say, this is what I need. And I'll tell you what I can give you. Mm -hmm. And like, that's where we meet. I don't need the other stuff. I don't need the office politics. (laughs) I don't need the hierarchies. I just want that transaction. And I want it to be an honest one. And I think for people with ADHD, that kind of simple, clear cut thinking for for my particular version of ADHD Mm. is very helpful. Um, I've just a couple more questions for you, Gillian, if I may. Um, You mentioned hyper focus earlier, and I think that's something I wish I had (laughs) uh, because (laughs) I'm so easily distracted. Can you just explain a little bit about hyper focus and what that means? Yeah. So um, for me, it is. it's been really, so I'll just say, it's been really interesting to sort of start to pay attention once I realized I had this disorder. Um, and uh, candidly, I don't even like calling it a disorder. It's just <laughs> how I'm wired, mm-hmm. but I lack a better term. Uh, neurodivergence, I guess, is the best word. Um, but hyperfocus is the opposite of the kind of fidgety, like needing to get up constantly. It's when my brain is in the right place, when it's feeling that squeeze, when I've got the deadline, I've had enough caffeine, but not too much caffeine. <laughs> I've had enough sleep, but not too much sleep. And, um, and I know I have to, to kind of buckle down and do something. And, and I am able to sit for really, really lengthy periods of time to the detriment of my family sometimes um, and write for you know a long time for a whole day on one piece without really taking a break. And by the end of it, you kind of realize I haven't used the bathroom. I forgot to have lunch. I, you know, I've literally just hyper focus on whatever it is and that could be work it could be something else um planning a trip or but it's it's just this fluctuation between sort of the hyper focus and the the inability to focus that people with ADHD Mm. tend to suffer from and did you have that when you were working in in in-house in offices as well uh 
I did. And I think that was a, a challenge for me was um, because of the, the hierarchies and the, the structures there. Um, I would be given a project and I would hyper focus when I was given the project. You know, I was in the office, so I was very conscious, like people are watching me. <laughs> I need to be working. I can't be kind of doing this other stuff to make myself feel comfortable. Um, so I would hyper focus and get something done, but I would do it a lot faster than my, my colleagues. And, and as a result, it would go into the review process and I would just kind of be sitting there waiting for someone to review it. So yeah, it, it, was, um, it was hard to find the balance in the office, but, um, but I've definitely experienced hyper focus periods throughout my professional life and even in my childhood, if I'm honest, if I think back on it. Mm, awesome. Um, well, Gillian, uh, if I could just ask one more question, um, yeah. and that is the obvious one. As someone who, and thank you for trusting us with, uh, with your um, first real talk about this experience <laughs> that you've had. Um, you know, you've, you've had a lot of experience now. Uh, what tips do you have for managers or peers listening who might think they have or have already been diagnosed with ADD and then conversely, just to chuck everything at you, for those who are managing or working with neurodiverse people, you know, what, what is, what are your experience, you know, what tips would you have for the workplace in terms of dealing with this? Yeah, I think it's hard for, um, I think there are a lot of people flying under the radar who haven't acknowledged or, or opened up about their diagnosis probably with their managers, because it's a hard thing to do, you know, when you when you start to talk about it and you start to describe it, it sounds an awful lot like you're just not getting your work done, like you just want to be doing other things. And that's really not the case. So if someone has trusted you to tell you about their diagnosis in a professional setting, I think the best thing you can do is ask them what they need. Um, and again, it comes back to that, like, let's let's make a transaction. Here's what I need from you. Can you tell me what you need from me? And sometimes that might be a physical thing. Um, for me, having a footrest under me is really helpful because I have a strange thing that's related to my ADHD where I have to have one foot under me to be writing. I have to have my feet up. So um, for other people, it's you know having a fidget toy or something like that, or sitting near a window so they can look out the window. So they're physical things. They're also um, you know kind of um, things about the, the place you work in. So like, are you working from home, or do you need a couple days to work from home? Um, or sorry, remotely or from wherever you are in the world. And um, just being honest and open with each other is, uh, is uh, where I would start. And I'm not suggesting everyone go freelance. For me, it's been really liberating to be able to set my own hours and pick the projects that I'm interested in. And, um, but for other people that might not be ideal or realistic, so mm. yeah. Awesome stuff. Well, Gillian, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, and you are a part of the community. So I'm sure people uh, can tag you and thank you for, for your honesty here as thank well. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. No, I just want to say um, a shout out to you all too, because I think when I saw what you were up to and read about what this community is, um, how I wish I had had access to something like this when I was working in an office, because um, I think it's really important and a lot of people might not even know they need that support, but they do. So it's really good that you're having these conversations and there are a lot of, a lot of topics to touch on. So I look forward to participating in the conversation going forward too. Awesome, thank you, Gillian. Thanks. Uh, and we will see you around.